Bro, it's first thing in the morning. What are you doing in my cell? You had to fight with your cellmate. That's not good. You're in the cell with the blood dude, right? Did you win? You won. Yeah, that's definitely not good. What you mean I, it's not good? It's not good. You just beat the blood up. There's like 60 of them in this pod. Out of 86 people. You're probably about to have a real bad day. Look, let me get myself together, man, and wrap my head around what you done did, man. Was it his fault or your fault? It was both y'all's fault, so it was your fault. Yeah, you just messed my whole day up, man. All right, I need to get up. I need to get dressed, put my boots on. Look, they already squatting up, man. Yeah, I'll be on in a minute. You had to be the stupidest motherfucker. Man, y'all already know what it is. Jay Williams, let's live life, and we're back. Today, we're going to dig into some of the gangs, man. What happens when you beat a gang member up? I've been there. I've done it. I've dealt with it. What happens when you get into it with a gang member? All the other ones aren't just going to stand by. No. There is no one-on-ones with gang members. Unless they approve it or you catch them in the cell. I've seen times where they came through recruiting on some get down or lay down type stuff. Meaning you're going to be with us or you're going to lay down. And the way you're going to lay down ain't going to be the way you think. They're going to knock you down and you're going to stay down because they're going to hurt you. I never got down. Crazy enough. I've seen them extort, go sell to sell, extorting people. The only thing that saved me is i have been in there a while. Dudes knew me. Dudes knew of me. Dudes knew I wasn't just going to let them just take my stuff. So they get to my cell. Jay, what's up with your celly? Ain't nothing happening, man. Y'all not coming in here and taking nothing. You're not taking nothing from me. You're not taking nothing from him. All right, we just thought we'd try. All right, all right soldier. And they keep it moving. So today we're going to get into fighting with gangs. You heard me. Fighting with gangs. How do you fight an organization that's bigger than the average man's family? Because that's what they call themselves, a family. Huh. It always ends bad. Anyways, you know how to seen it. You know how to lived it. So, fighting with gangs? Let's relive it. Now, I remember when there was no gangs. Then in the mid-90s, the gangs took off. You've got California, Chicago, places like that that have always been real prevalent when it came to gangs. With the music that was coming out in the 90s and all the different gang-affiliated rappers, all of a sudden dudes wanted to be gangsters. But not the gangsters we're used to. They wanted to be gang members. They didn't want to be the gangsters like you see in the mafia movies or the gangsters you see in the action flicks. Nah, they wanted to be the, the gangsters' gangsters. They wanted to be the ones that had the red and blue rags. I start seeing it in the neighborhoods, start seeing it in school. Then when I'm getting locked up, I'm starting to see the gangs in the jails real heavy and the, and the detention centers as well. Then it starts to fade out in the streets. The police out here got a hold of that real quick. When I made my way to prison, a lot of the guys that were in the prison that were gang affiliated, that were high ranking, have been in there since the 90s. When they came through and they cleaned up the streets and started sweeping them up. Here's the thing with gang members. You have gang members that are white, black, Asian, any type of race you could think about has gang members. Any size. I don't care if you're six foot seven, they'll take you. Four foot one, they'll take you. You got one finger on one hand, just got a pointer, they'll take you. When I got to prison, the jail was already off the chain with the gangs. I've told y'all this, I think I've touched on this before, but I remember we got this high-ranking gang member dude in there, and they already had a bunch of gang members running around, running amok, doing what they wanted to do. And it was a good thing when this dude with some, some power showed up at first. It was good because they, them dudes had no direction. They had nobody to tell them, don't do this or don't do that. Nah, you out of pocket, chill. This dude shows up and he puts like the laws down. 
hey, y'all not going to do this. You got to get my permission to do this. Nah, that's not cool. So things kind of calm down. Well, then these, these two gangs get to beefing. It's two separate gangs. They get to beefing, and the one gang has got more numbers than the other. So the gang with the lower number, they squad up one morning. I'm sitting in a day room, and in the jail, we didn't have TVs in our cells. So if you wanted to watch TV, cartoons, news, anything, whatever you're into, you got to come out and join everybody else. There was three TVs in the pod. And you sit down, you take your little radio, put your earbuds in, and you tune the, the radio to the radio station. There's a transmitter inside the TV that picks up the signal from your radio. That's how you listen to TV. I'm sitting there, and I see all these gang member dudes squatted up underneath the staircase, and they're deep. Deep meaning all of their members were there. Anytime you see all of them in one place, something's about to go down. A little bit after lunch, we lock down. We come out after lunch, after count time, and I see them. They're all squatted up again underneath the staircase, and they take off in separate directions. And they start going cell to cell. A bunch of them going to top tier, a bunch of them going to top bottom tier. And they go up in a cell, and you hear them talking, you hear a little arguing, and they hear, do 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 they be fighting. They were going cell to cell to cell. If that cell didn't have a gang member in it, and the two guys in there were non-gang affiliated, they were going up in there. And what they were doing was they were recruiting. But it wasn't no, hey, do you want to be with us? It was, you're about to be with us. So this ass whooping can either mean that you're now with us, or this ass whooping can just mean you just got your ass whooped. And just like that, their numbers more than doubled. I had been in there, I'm going to say, Maybe seven months at this point. I'm cool with all the gangs. Cool with everybody in there. I've had offers from all different gangs and I've told them, nah, ain't nothing happening. So my celly at the time is, is a younger white dude that, and dude Chris I talked about, that don't really bother nobody, man. Cool dude, man. I, I vibe with dude. Dude was a good dude. Still is a good dude. I'm sitting out in the, in the day room at the TVs and I'm watching all this fuckery take place. I'm watching these dudes go cell to cell, just jumping dudes. The only thing that might save you is if you're just completely worthless to them. Like, you're an old man and they know, all right, man, this ain't no point. And even then, you had some old dudes that wanted to get down. I see them, they're like two cell doors down from my cell. And my cell is up in there and he's asleep. They get to my cell and they bang on the door, right? And the thing with the day room is when they pop the doors, they pop them all. So my door is open. All they got to do is grab it and open it. They bang on the door, and I see him open the door. So I get up, and I go over there, and they're in the cell, and they tell him, I tell him, yo, get up, man. Come on. Get down on the floor. Like, put your feet on the floor. Like, it's time to get down. You're going to be with us. It is what it is. So I go up to the cell, and I tell him, nah, nah, ain't nothing happening, man. Leave dude alone. Jay, this ain't got nothing to do with you. It's got everything to do with me because you're in my cell. Like, y'all ain't come holler at me or nothing. And dude, nah, man, he's just a younger man. He's like 19 years old. He's not getting down. He don't want to get down. He ain't getting down. Jay, you need to mind your business, man. Stay out of this. I'm telling y'all, dude's not getting down. Straight up. Like, I can go to your big homie, and your big homie will let me line it up with you one-on-one. -on -one. Like, they're not about to bank this dude, and he's not about to be no gang member, man. He's not. He gets out soon. Let dude be. Y'all got plenty of dudes to mess with. Go on to the next cells. Me and dude don't get to arguing. Like I said, I got to right, rapport with these dudes, and they know I'll go if I need to go. I'm not snatching ass. I'm not selling wolf tickets. I'm dead ass serious. Like, if one of y'all swing off on him or try to do what y'all think y'all going to do, we're going to have problems in here right now. It's going to be both of us versus y'all three. And I'm all right. I feel like I can beat at least two of y'all because y'all not that scary, to be honest, right? They roll out. They continue with their gang initiation. Wouldn't be long after that they get their numbers up. They go at it. These blood dudes and these crypt dudes completely bang out in the pod. It's just like a. It's crazy when you watch something like that happen because you see the dudes that are really about that life get busy. You see the dudes that can take a punch and continue stroking, just running up, attacking anybody that ain't with them. So this whole big-ass gang fight just ensues. The guards ain't never seen nothing like this before. This is a first. We got a rookie on the floor that she's been there maybe a total of a week now. This is like her third time in our pod. She's got a whole entire gang fight popping off. 
For all of us that aren't gang affiliated, we already know what it is. When that goon squad comes in, it's knees and elbows, meaning you're going to end up with a knee or elbow in the back of your neck. You're going to get sprayed. It's going to be a bad day to be standing out there because if you're out there, you're involved. One of their members and one of their members getting the bump and they got to fighting without permission. So now both gangs are going to go at it. This little rookie chick don't even know what to do. She's on a microphone. She's done buzzed one door, stepped outside the pod. So now there's no officer in the pod. And it's just complete chaos. Dudes are just running around tables, hitting each other, slamming dudes, picking dudes up and suplexing them. Like, it was crazy to say the least. I go ahead and tell my celly. I said, look, we ain't got shit to do with this. Hold on real quick. Clank. And I shut the door. We stand in the doorway and just watch all this madness ensue. In comes the goon squad. In comes the riot squad. Spraying dudes down. Hitting them with the OC spray. If y'all don't know what OC spray is, it's just like this yellowish orange spray in a big ass black canister that you could drop a bear with. I could spray it in your direction seven feet that way. Not even hit you. And it's going to mess you all the way up. Just from it being in the air. It's like it consumes the oxygen. And everything you breathe in is just that spray. They come in. They start hitting everybody with the OC spray. Start laying all these dudes down. Now, they got a big-ass clear bag full of big black zip ties. It's too many dudes to handcuff, so they're zip-tying them. They finally get it under control, and they take them all up out of there. There's so many guys that they have filled the hole to capacity. They've now had to clean out a block that was, like, under construction. They were in there painting this one one pod at this, at this point, and there was no inmates in there. They've now designated this as, like, an overflow for the hole. In a matter of... I'd say the whole thing, the whole ordeal lasted maybe seven, eight minutes. 65, 70% of the pod disappeared. They all went in zip ties and they went up out of there. With jail, they're not going to ship you off. You're coming back out. You're going to do whatever whole time you got, whatever your charge is. And then you're going to come back out to either where you came from, another part of the jail, but you're going back out in the population. One of the main dudes comes out, and I guess when he was back in the hole, they got to talking about how I, I told the dudes they couldn't they couldn't jump Chris, and Chris wasn't going to become no gang member, right? And he comes over to the cell, and he's like, what's good with you, Jay? And I, my first thought is, if he's coming over here to holler at me, then we got problems, and this is behind me, not letting them jump Chris in. So he's like, what's up, man? Let me holler at you. I said, all right, come in the cell. Like, I'm not going to stand out in the day room, so if we have problems, the guards will see it. I'm standing in my doorway. I back up. I said, all right, come in the cell. So he's like, nah, it ain't, it ain't even on that type of time. It ain't on that type of time. So he goes on to tell me, he's like, I respect what you did. Man. Now, like I told you, when things like this happen, that's when you really see who's who. That's when you see who's really about that life. I saw guys that I just knew. I'm like, oh, he's a big dude. He's going to crash people. He's going to wreck people. Those are some of the main guys I've seen that would run up and square off. And when somebody would swing on them, would take, around, take off and run backwards. Over half of the gang wasn't even fighting. They were more or less running. Like you'd have this guy chasing two guys or two guys chasing this guy. Then a whole squad of people fighting, a bunch of people fighting, a bunch of people in the middle. But you had a lot of people that really weren't, never really signed up to be a gang member. In there for being a junkie. In there for stealing checks. In there for petty larceny and now they're an entire gang war it's crazy to watch you see who's really violent who's really crazy and who really didn't want no parts of none of that but none of that mattered when that goon squad came in they locked dudes up out there that didn't go to their cell you had dudes watching tv that instead of locking down like i did figured i'm gonna fall back and watch this i'm just gonna stand over here by my door when they came in if your ass was standing out there you were part of it. You got zip tied. You got lifted up like luggage, towed it up out of there, got your arms all twisted and damn near broke out the socket. And that would be the end of that whole ordeal. We got a whole bunch of new guys in the pod. Gang members came back. I never had no issues out of it. The one dude that, when the, when the little crypt dudes came to my cell, the one dude I told you I kicked it with, I kicked it with him since he came in there. We'd meal it up talked we knew a lot of the same people from the streets so with me telling them dudes i'll go to your big homie and line your ass up it was facts and they knew it they knew if i said look man 
I want dude. He's disrespectful. I told him to keep it moving. Even though they were told to do this, they knew there were certain cells or off limits. It was certain dudes that y'all chill with, that y'all cool with, that you don't push like that. Now, I ain't never proclaimed to be no tough guy. I don't. But I do proclaim that I fought each and every time that I knew it was time to fight. And even if I didn't want to fight, you could even say that there was some level of fear there. I would still fight because I knew that if I didn't fight in that moment, everything that comes after that is out of my control. I've now lost control of my bed. I've now lost control of tomorrow. I become a puppet. You're not going to make me do something I don't want to do. I've got a decade to do in here. I've got prison after prison after prison I got to go to when I leave this jail. I'm not about to be gang affiliated, run my time up, and not get home to my son because of something y'all got me caught up in. I have enough problems handling my own business, much less handling the problems of every single other gang member and what they got going on. So nah, I didn't get down that day. When they all rumbled, Stayed out of it. Me and my celly both. A bunch of other dudes that were smart enough stayed out of it. But you had a whole bunch of guys in there that it wasn't even 72 hours ago that you were just your average, average normal Joe Blow, Mr. Credit Card Thief, Mr. I Stole Somebody's Lawnmower, Mr. I Pushed Somebody's Basketball Court two blocks down the street to my house and got caught with it. Wouldn't be me. I came in as Jay Solo Dolo. And I left as J solo dolo. So the next video, strangely enough, I got to start at the very beginning, which is pre-prison, to make this make sense. Now, you know, there's times in life where you go through things and you don't know that that situation or somebody from that situation is going to play a major role in something that happens down the line. That's exactly what happened in this next story. I was 18 at the time, had just got out the tent center, hadn't been out long, and I got my first little apartment. It's a little efficiency. You know, you walk into the kitchen and the living room, that's all one big room, and you got one bedroom, a bathroom, a closet. Just a little roach shack, roach motel, if you will. Everybody had roaches. It don't matter. If you ain't never lived with roaches, you're going to have roaches when you live there, right? We call over this girl's house one night and there's a dude in the background running his mouth and we hear other dudes in the background running their mouth. One thing leads to another. Dude gets on the phone. He's real greasy with his mouth, disrespectful. Now, I got a whole apartment full of, of dudes that just train to go. They don't give a shit. If I say ride, let's, you know, let's ride. They gonna ride. Dude starts popping his mouth, making all these threats out of nowhere just because... These dudes were chilling with some chicks that we were talking to. So we squad up, ride through there. I'm driving down the street and I see this dude standing beside this car with a pit bull, smoking a blunt, 12, 30, 1 o'clock at night. There's dude right there, man. This dude gotta be crazy. He ain't got no homeboys with him. Whatever, he gonna wear this ass with him by himself then. We park the car, I hop out, I run up on a dude. We get into it a little bit. Boom, he takes off with the dog, right? Better part of a week passes. We don't hear nothing else. We call them girls' phone. They don't answer. We don't hear nothing from these dudes, right? Better part of a week passes. One of my homeboys I was real tight with at the time comes through and he's got a dude with him. I'm looking at the dude and the dude's looking at me. He's like, yo, you the dude that jumped out of the car on me the other night, right? And I'm like, yeah, he was the dude that was on the phone. He was like, bro, I ain't never spoke to you a day in my life. I said, you was at such and such as them's house that night, right? He's like, nah, man. He's like, I ain't know what the hell was going on, man. I just took my dog out to use the bathroom, was smoking a blunt real quick and going back in the crib. Y'all rolled up on me. I was at my mom's crib. Like, I ain't know what was going on, man. Me and dude become close. Really, really, really close. Closer than friends, we were like brothers. He is on all types of probation got house arrest and little windows where he can get away to go places here and there. That's why he was at my apartment that day. He cuts his ankle monitor off and shows up at my door one night with his dog. What you gonna do? You gonna let me in? Or you just gonna let me stand out here? I'm 18. Whoever wants to flop can flop. You wanna stay here? Stay here. I don't care. So open the door and I let him in. That would be the beginning to a very, very long friendship. 
my apartment ends up getting raided. We were just committing so many stupid and pointless crimes being that young, going out all night robbing, stealing. My apartment gets raided by the police. I've told that story. You need to go check that out. Joe breaks out of my apartment, hides in another apartment, barricades himself in there, has to stand off with the police. They eventually get him. He goes to the detention center. I'm the only one that's 18. I go to jail with a whole rack of charges. End up beating my case. Now I ain't got no serial numbers on nothing, no witnesses to nothing, just hearsay from somebody that didn't like us. You can't prove anything stolen. We spanked the case. Joe now is in the detention center and his mother will not let him come back home. He's wild, he's out of control. He stays locked up. I talked to my mom, I've lost the apartment. I'm staying at my mom's for a brief period, a couple months. And I talked my mom into going and adopting Joe. I said, Mom, we can't leave Joe sitting up in there. Jack can't adopt your friend. I'm like, Mom, all they need is somebody to sign guardianship paperwork. Joe was like my brother. He's a good dude. He turns 18 in a couple months. Don't leave him sitting in there. Me and my mom go down to the courthouse. She fills out the paperwork. And just like that, she becomes his legal guardian. They release Joe. Joe gets out, comes to me, comes where I'm at with my, at my mom's house. We're there for a couple months. We get right back into the mix of being young, dumb criminals. Mom, y'all got to get the hell out of here. They're in the kitchen trying to cook dinner, and they hear us in there cocking AK-47s and loading banana clips. And, you know, we got music blasting in there. Nah, this ain't working. Y'all got to go. My mom's got other kids in the house. She's got a whole entire family she's trying to take care of. And you have us two misfits in there with machine guns and pistols plotting on hitting our next lick. And she comes across it. Y'all got to get out. Over the next few years, me and him both are in and out of lockup, in and out of lockup. Anytime we're not in lockup, we're like this, side by side. Joe's dating this girl at the time. And maybe I would say this was around 2003. Joe's dating this girl. And this girl has a couple of her girlfriends over. And these girls bring these dudes. We don't know. We ain't never met these dudes before. One of the dudes is there that night. Starts getting all cocky. He wants to be flashy and run his mouth and flex with his jewelry and his money. And he's doing way better than we are. He's got all this stuff. But what he don't know is we ain't the ones to be doing that around. Like, you're starting to look like something to eat. At the time, Joe had this pistol grip Mossberg. I think it was the 590. It was either the 590 or the 500. But he had this pistol grip Mossberg. Joe tells, hey, I'm about to rob dude. I'm about to lay this dude down. I'm about sick of his shit. Joe is staying with this girl. We're all at this girl's house. Her, it was her grandma's house. We're all out back. Nah, bro, that's a bad idea. Fuck you mean it's a bad idea? Flexing on me, flirting with my girl in front of me. Like, dude, nah, hell nah. Joe's one of those dudes, and he's a big Puerto Rican dude. Big ball-headed Puerto Rican dude. Not trying to hit none of that. He's a savage. Everybody's out back smoking blunts. Screen door opens. Joe steps out. Pulls the pump from behind his back. Puts it in dude's face. Tells dude lay down. Runs dude's pocket. Strips dude down to his underwear. Kicks him in his ass and down the steps at the back of the house. Tells him, the hell out of here. Leave, man. Dude left. Police come back. They lock Joe up for armed robbery. Possession of firearm. Commission of felony. Whole bunch of shit. Joe gets 10 years in prison. He gets sent off. The next year after that, I catch my 10-year bid. I get sent off. While I'm in prison, I'm hearing a lot about my homeboy, Joe, and what he's got going on, and how he's done become blood, and he's worked his way up the ranks, and that he's going from higher, like one level prison to the next, to the next, to the next. My homeboy was known for getting busy. He didn't have no problem getting busy. Violence was just second nature. If you wanted it, you could get it. Another one of my dudes comes to me and says, yo, Zeus is your man, right? That's your dude. I'm like, Zeus? Who the hell is Zeus? He's like, almighty Zeus. I'm like, bro, I don't know nobody named Zeus. He's like, Joe Claudio. I'm like, yeah, that's my brother, man, which by law, he is my brother. My mother adopted him. Yeah, that's my brother. What's up? Man, your brother's crashed out, man. Like, 
I was just up Sussex with him about six, seven months ago. Him and another dude named Javon Rose. I'll get into Javon Rose's story one day, too. He's doing 30-some years on a murder charge. Went to high school with Javon. You know, your brother's blood, man. I said, what? He's like, yeah, big Puerto Rican motherfucker's blood. He's high up in the ranks. He runs with, you know, Javon Rose, which is one of the lead dudes at the time. I said, nah, I ain't know all that, man. He's like, yeah. He's like, well, anyway, I was up Sussex. And Sussex is a major. It's a major institution. It's a max. Like, everybody there pretty much has done something foul, like violent in the system or in the streets. That's how you got there. Your brother and Javon Rose got into it with another gang up there and stabbed a bunch of people up. I watched it. He's like, your brother and, and Rose, man, went at it with a whole squad of dudes and was just sticking and stabbing. He's like, the shit was crazy. Your brother's a savage, man. I said, where are they calling him Zeus now? We haven't run across each other in the system at this point at all. He's like, yeah, man. He's like, well, they done shipped him off now. Pretty sure you that Wallace Ridge or Red Onion, which is the end of the line. You can't go any further in the system than Wallace Ridge or Red Onion. I said, damn, that's crazy. First of all, it's crazy to me that he's a blood. Secondly, it's crazy that he's high ranking like he is. And thirdly, that him and Javon Rose, both dudes I know very well, both dudes I've kicked it with and got a rapport with, not only had his high rank, but just completely went to war with a gang by themselves i think what happened is they got caught slipping the dudes ran down on them both of them were strapped up with knives and back to back they just let's go just started stabbing and defending one another both of them got hit in these situations got stabbed as well they go to court joe gets three more years gets sent further up in the mountains gets more time for attacking dudes with knives we fast forward to it was 2009 I've got a homeboy named Spoon, and I need to tell y'all, you're going to say Spoon. We had a white dude come in, and Spoon was probably 27, 28 years old. And at the time, the gangs were storting real heavy. Dudes were getting stabbed left and right. Like, to see somebody get stabbed or hear somebody stabbed or see somebody with a stab wound was just normal. It was like turning on TV. There was nothing out of normal. You've seen it so many times now that it's hard to be shocked by it. This dude transfers over to our pile from another part of the prison, and everybody calls him Spoon. I link up with the dude on the weight pile. I'm looking at him one day. He's got all this weight on the bench. I'm like, ain't no way that dude could push that. That little son bitch got that 285 up and was repping it, benching it. So I went over there. I was like, man, I didn't even see that coming, bro. I really thought you was about to kill yourself with all that weight. Like, I can hit it, but I didn't foresee you being able to lift that much weight. He introduces himself. Yeah, my name's Spoon, man. What's up? I seen you in the pod and shit. He's a tattoo man, right? I said, yeah, you can call me that, I guess. He goes on to tell me, he's like, when I first got here, man, I seen somebody get stabbed, and it kind of freaked me out. And I didn't really see what the dude had in his hand. I just seen that he had something. He was stabbing, dude. He was like, so that night I went in my cell, and I sat down while my celly was asleep, and I was sharpening my spoon on the floor, the handle of it. He's like, my celly woke up. I was like, what are you doing? He was like, I'm making a knife, man. I'm like, ain't nobody going to stab me. I'm going to stab somebody with a spoon. He was like, Bro, dudes got pieces of steel around here, 14, 16, 18 inches long. Dudes got swords and machetes. Like, you ain't about to do nothing with that spoon. Somebody gonna kill your ass. You pull that spoon out on them. So they call, started calling dude spoon, right? I end up working out with this dude all the time. And this is the thing about prison. It's not hard to make friends. You're gonna find dudes you kick it with, dudes you like, dudes you I like. It's hard to keep friends because situations take place to where guys have to do things. Now they get shipped off. Every now and then, one of your dudes might go home. Somebody might do something, get caught making wine or tattooing or fighting, and they might go to the hole. So it's easy to make friends, but it's hard to keep them because in that environment, at any given moment, somebody you're cool with can get snatched up and sent away. Spoon Sully gets snatched up for some reason and sent off. He goes to the hole. Everything is cool until he gets his new celly. Now, his new celly lives upstairs in our building and wants to get downstairs where we're at because there's a lot more gang members, a lot of bloods in our part. Spoon, sure enough, gets this young black gang dude that is just about that life. He likes that gang banging shit. He's always suit woo, throwing up gang signs and just he's deep into the gang culture and the, the dudes that are gang banging, right? Well, now Spoon's went from 
it being his cell to it being him and his celly cell to his celly having all these gang members in the cell all the time to where Spoon don't even want to be in the cell. At any given moment, there's seven, eight dudes in the cell. They're smoking weed. They're not passing the weed to him, which that's a no-no. If you're going to smoke in my cell and leave an odor in the air for the guards to potentially smell it and shake my shit down, you at least got to let me smoke with you. I'm not going to the hole behind some shit y'all did. As soon as y'all finish smoking, y'all just roll out. Now my whole cell reeks of weed and y'all ain't even let me hit it. So Spoon's starting to feel this type of way. I've told other dudes in the past, same thing I told Spoon. You got to straighten that. Chance a whole entire gang, like, how am I supposed to straighten it? You ain't got to straighten the gang. That's your cellmate. You got to respect the fact that y'all share a cell together. Just holler at him. You ain't got to come on no rah-rah shit. You just got to talk to him like a man. Let him know, look, man, you can't be having all these dudes in a cell. This is my little private space as well as it is yours. When Jay and them come by, I step out the cell and we kick it at the door like, has some respect. He tells me he's going to holler at his cellmate. It don't go as planned. His cellmate punches him in his face. I guess they couldn't come to an agreement on what was going to happen. And dude just wasn't feeling being told by this white dude what to do. I guess he figured Spoon wasn't built like that. Spoon got the best of him in the cell. Kicked his ass. Beat the shit out this dude in his cell. Next morning, bright and early, I'm asleep. I'm not even getting up for this child trade they got. It is some bullshit. There are certain trades they serve a child that you're just like, I'm not even disturbing my sleep to get up for this. That's I'm not going over there to eat no damn Perina. Perina's like grits that's really watered down and a little bit sweet. Then you get some old dried up ass potatoes, a little piece of bread. Ain't nobody got time to be going over there to eat that, right? Spoon knocks on my door. Jay, get up. Some. And the way he knocks, I know it's a problem. So I wake up and I'm like, what's up, man? I need you to get up, man. I need you. What's up? Bro, just get up. So I get up and I'm like, what's up, man? Put my shower shoes on. Go to the door. He's like, yo, he ain't trying to talk loud. He's like, I got to rumbling with dude last night. So what happened? He's like, I tried to holler at him and dude got all blah, blah, blah of his mouth. Poked his chest out. We ended up going at it. We fought. I said, you all right? He was like, yeah, I'm good. He's like, I, I dusted dude's ass off. I beat, I beat the shit out of that boy in there. Like, I pinned him down and did him dirty, man. He's pretty knotted up. So I know I'm like, this ain't good, man. He done beat a goddamn gang member. Excuse me, Lord. He done beat a gang member up. It's going to end bad, man. He needs, my back. he needs me to back him up. And I'm going to back him up. He's my homeboy. If you don't back your homeboy up in that moment, you on some bitch shit, even if it is against an entire gang. So I'm putting my boots on and I done popped my door. So he's in step to my cell and I'm looking out and I can look straight over to his cell and I see all these gang members squatting up. I said, man, they already squatting up, bro. He was like, I, I know, man, I know. What are we gonna do? I said, I don't know. I said, I, fuck, I mess with a big homie, man. I'm gonna talk to him and see if, uh, you know, I can, I can talk to him and try to de-escalate this. But general rules is they don't fight one-on-one. -on -one. You done beat one of theirs up. There's gonna be problems behind this. All right, man, let's see what you can do. So I go over there, and they're all up in Spoon Cell, and they got the big homie up in there, which is the dude that's the highest ranking in our building, in our pod, talking to dude about what's going on. And I was like, yo, man, can I holler at you? And he was like, nah, I'm going to be over there at your cell in a minute to holler at you. So I said, all right. So I tell, I tell Spoon, go ahead and go to Chow, man. They're not going to crash out in Chow. They're not trying to go to the hole. A whole bunch was going on at this point. They couldn't afford to go to the hole. They're going to try to do whatever's going to happen in the cell. Dude comes over to my cell and he's like, what's up? I said, look, man, my homeboy tried to holler at your homeboy because your homeboy is being disrespectful. He said, that's got nothing to do with you. First thing's out of his mouth. I said, well, it kind of does, man, because that's my homeboy and I know how y'all get down and what y'all about to do. And, well, you know what I mean? Out of respect for me, I'm asking y'all not, that, that's, that's not going to happen, Jay. I got to have him. We can't just let dudes that ain't gang affiliated beat up ours and not do anything about it. You already know what's got to happen. I said, man, I can't sit by and just watch y'all beat this dude up. He's a good dude, man. Your, your homeboy is completely out of pocket. Your homeboy started the fight and he lost. And now y'all want to jump my homeboy because he won? Your homeboy started the fight. The little gang member dude started the fight. No matter who started it, you can't be putting your hands on my dogs or my pups like that and think that we ain't going to do nothing about it. Now, these dudes ain't never been in my cell. They've been to my door, but they never looked at all the pictures I got hanging on the wall or really peeped my cell out like that. We just talk out in the open, talk in the weight pile, talk in the yard, talk if we got to 
do some business, sell some weed, buy some weed, cigarettes, tobacco, merchandise, anything like that, right? So dude's like, look, I'm telling you, your best bet is to stay out of it. If you don't stay out of it, you're going to get rolled on. Straight like that. Like, that's my young boy. I got to show everybody you can't do nothing to him. Or we're going to do something to whoever and everybody involved in what happened. I said, what well, is what it is, man. I'm going to rock out behind my homeboy just like you going to rock out with yours. I thought we was better than that. You know what I mean? Like, I really thought you had some sense and I could holler at you. But I see that ain't that ain't what's going on, right? He was like, well, we can start with your homeboy. We can start with you, but we got to send a message. I said, it's whatever, man. Either way, I can't just leave my homeboy hanging like that. You know what I mean? Am I trying to fight with all y'all? Hell no. Nah. That's a crash mission. That's a dummy mission. But am I going to leave my homeboy out to hang to hang out to dry like that and just turn my back on him because he's beefing with y'all? Nah, I'm going to bang out behind him. So what you saying? So what you saying then, right? Big dude comes in the cell. Me and big dude go at it. We lock up and we're upside the countertop. And he's got pretty much my arms pinned to where I can't raise the thing. And I keep trying to hit him with my head. And I'm talking shit. My cell, he's a bigger dude. Comes back from chow. Comes over, sees what's going on. Comes inside the cell and pushes the button on the door, which... I'm glad he did because now it keeps anybody else from running up in the cell. We've only been in the cell tussling now. I'm not even calling it fighting because we locked up right from the gate. Maybe a total of 10, 15 seconds. He pushes the door. Now I got other dudes outside my door talking about some, man, open the door, open the door. Trying to get the, the guard in trouble to open the door so they can come in there and jump me. So my celly, like I said, is bigger than this dude, bigger than me. He gets Yo, y'all chill, y'all chill. He pulls us apart and we're standing there with both. Tired, he's still talking shit. My son is telling me, Jay, don't swing, don't swing, don't swing. Y'all can't do this here. We got too much going on. Chill out. So me and dude are standing there. I'm standing and I got this wall behind me with this red square. And dude's looking at me and he looks beside me and he sees that picture of Joe Claudio. He sees that picture of Almighty Zeus on the wall. Me and Joe have been writing back and forth, three-way letters. Joe just sent me a bunch of different pictures of him while he's locked up. I just sent him pictures. It's like my brother. He sees that picture and he's like, yo, why you got pictures of the big homie on your wall? I said, what? Why you got pictures of Zeus on the wall, man? How you know Zeus? I said, that's my brother, man. What? I said, that's my brother, man. Joe Claudio, that's my brother, man. That's your brother, brother? That's my adoptive brother. Yes, that's my brother. Yo, look, man. The whole energy changed instantly. Yo, look, man. My bad, bro. You good. What you mean I'm good? That's my big homie. What? Yeah, Joe brought me home. That's my big homie. Your brother is the dude that, one of the dudes I answer to. I said, so what's going to happen now? Look, he extended his hand. I apologize. I ain't know. See, what's going to happen is, if I send word to Zeus, to Joe, that these dudes just tried to ride down on me and me and dude got to wrecking, even though he don't know that me and Joe are linked in any way, Joe still got the power to violate these dudes and have things done to them. Dude goes out and hollers at the other dudes and says, let the dude spoon live, man. And y'all fall back from Jay, ain't nothing happening. I guess he tells them who I am, who Joe is and who, you know, how Joe is almighty Zeus. Joe is a penitentiary legend. Joe is way up the ranks in this game. And the whole thing is dead. Spoon never had to, to fight again. And we actually had to watch his dumb ass Sully walk around for the next few weeks with his face all knotted up and his eyes swole shut. I ended up shooting Joe a kite and told him the dude's name that I got into it with and a couple of the other dudes that was affiliated. And he hit me back and was like, do you want me to, you know, I, I can send word down and have it taken care of if you want. I shoot him another kite. Nah, bro, I'm good. Dude's got nothing but love for you. Apologize. It's all love, man. You know what I mean? Like, we're on different compounds, but once he found out we were brothers, he deaded the whole situation. Joe hit me back. Cool. If you need anything, if anything ever comes from it, you find any type of flack with them dudes, you just say the name Almighty Zeus, and it'll shut down, and it'll die right then and there. Ironically enough, that letter I received from him that day would be the last time we ever communicated. Joe would go on to get out of prison, got out before me. My brother Philly kicked it with Joe a little bit before Joe went back up. Joe ended up moving up north to like a Rhode Island area. And a couple months back, Joe took his own life. Joe had been dealing with serious depression, had serious psychological issues from the penitentiary, the things he had been through. Joe was on a whole bunch of psych meds. 
that he had been prescribed since prison and since getting out because Joe was messed up up here, man. The night fights, all that time in isolation, just Joe in a hole. He was just, uh, he just was never the same, man. He met a girl, and this is all hearsay. This is what I've been told from people. He met a girl. He had a kid with the girl. The girl got on some. She was using the baby as a pawn, keeping the baby from Joe. So Joe got in his car and left one night and came up missing for like five, six days. From what I'm hearing, they ended up finding Joe OD dead in the car from taking all his own prescription medications. And he had been in the car about six days before they found him. I know you're looking down. And I want you to know I love you, Joe. Almighty Zeus, whatever you want to call it. Uh, you will be missed, man. I'm going to do more on your story one day. And uh, I appreciate that, man. You don't even know how you came back to to help me in a moment when I needed you most. man. Because uh, what was going to happen that day in that cell with me and that big dude? What was going to happen when that doors open? Uh, was Who knows, man? I might not be here. But yeah, I got word that that Joe actually killed himself a couple months back, man. And when I seen pictures of him, he didn't even resemble the person I knew. All the bigness in him, the joy in his eyes, the smile he used to have, it was all gone. But yeah, that's my story of uh, Almighty Zeus, man. Joe and uh, my homeboy Spoon beating up his blood cellmate, me getting into it with the big homie, and the whole thing being squashed because... My, my adoptive brother turned out to be their big homie, man. Crazy ass situation. So that was just a little bit of uh, how things get man, when you're locked up and dealing with the gangs. Not typical stories. That with the first situation, it was crazy, man. I felt good about stepping in and uh, standing up for my homeboy, Chris. Even though he did, you know, from what I heard, going to become affiliated I thought I was doing the right thing then with my homeboy Joe rest in peace Joe uh, this is crazy how people from the past come back to play major parts in the present I've seen just about everything you see when it comes to the games from them going to war with each other going to war with other games fighting administration catching cases while locked up Catching cases for things they're doing over the phone that happen in the free world. That all just comes with the territory. I can understand if you were born into the gang life. You live in a neighborhood where you have no option in the matter. But if you have a choice, man, I empower you and I ask you to try to avoid that. If that ain't got to be your life, don't jump into something voluntarily. Because it doesn't just go away. You think you're just going to join a gang or something while you're in prison and that's just going to be the end of it? I'm here to tell you it's not. I know dudes that joined gangs in prison, got out, went back to prison behind, doing things that their gang was doing. Not nothing I want no parts of. Man. At 41 years old, I've never been a gang anymore. I've been part of neighborhoods. You know, I grew up in a neighborhood and like, we Southwest or this is Richmond or whatever. I've been part of